name is Joanna. I'm a sixth year PhD candidate in molecular biology and genetics at Cornell. Um, so I do a lot of stuff with cancer cells and I'm also a member of the CGSU UE bargaining committee. Hi, my name is Jenna Marvin. I am a third year PhD student in the Department of the History of Art at Cornell University. Um, I actually work on the history of American photography. Um, and like Joanna, I'm also a member of CGSU UE's bargaining committee. All right. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Working People, a podcast about the lives, jobs, dreams, and struggles of the working class today. Brought to you in partnership with In These Times Magazine and The Real News Network, produced by Jules Taylor, and made possible by the support of listeners like you. Working People is a proud member of the Labor Radio Podcast Network. If you're hungry for more worker and labor-focused shows like ours, follow the link in the show notes and go check out the other great shows in our network. And please support the work that we're doing here at Working People because we can't keep going without you. Share our episodes with your coworkers, your friends, and family members. Leave positive reviews of the show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And reach out to us if you have recommendations for folks you'd like us to talk to or subjects you'd like us to investigate. And please support the work that we do at The Real News by going to therealnews.com forward slash donate, especially if you want to see more reporting from the front lines of struggle around the U.S. and across the world. My name is Maximilian Alvarez, and we've got an urgent episode for y'all today. We are recording this on Tuesday, October 1st, and so I just want to say up top that circumstances uh, may change by the time you hear this, but we are going to do our best to turn this episode around and get it published as soon as we can after we finish this recording. But today, on Tuesday, October 1st, as we prepare to commemorate a year of Israel's genocide of Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank, as Israel, with the United States' full backing, drags the Middle East into an all-out war, the war here at home is ramping up on working people, and people of conscience everywhere who are speaking out and taking action to try to stop the slaughter, or at least to pressure those in power to do so. Just as the student encampment movement last school year turned institutions of higher education into a flashpoint of struggle over Israel's ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, U.S. support for it, and the right to speak out against it, College and university campuses this year are at the bleeding edge of institutional efforts to silence and repress Gaza solidarity and anti-war demonstrators. And that is playing out right now as we speak at Cornell University. As Aaron Fernando writes at The Nation, and I'm going to quote this piece at length, quote, Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, has taken disciplinary action against an international student that will likely force him to leave the country and could have a chilling effect on other international students participating in political protests. Mamadou Tal is a Ph.D. candidate in Africana Studies and a graduate student worker attending Cornell under the F-1 visa program. In the last academic year, Tal joined student-led actions demanding that Cornell divest from industries complicit in Israel's attacks on civilians in Gaza. Cornell student activists were not alone in launching public demonstrations across their college. Encampments took hold across the country. In response, some universities called in police to clear, often forcefully, pro-Palestinian student protesters. But Cornell took a different approach. During a year when it ostensibly prioritized free expression, the university created a new policy to crack down on these types of protest. First issued on January 24, 2024, the Interim Expressive Activities Policy limits when amplified sound can be used, delineates which objects are prohibited at collective campus actions like candles and sticks, and subjects some protesters to increased disciplinary action. By the end of the spring semester, six Cornell students, including Tall, face suspension for their pro-Palestinian activities. Quote, I'm trying to fight this, to at least have an investigation and due process, said Tall. I'm not asking for anything special. I'm asking for Cornell to follow their own procedure. 
end quote. The Cornell Graduate Student Union, which is attempting to help Tall, said, quote, no investigation was conducted before the discipline of temporary suspension was issued to Mamadou, end quote. The union issued a press release on Tuesday explaining that it is demanding to bargain with Cornell over the effects of the suspension. The union said, quote, Last spring, Cornell University signed a Memorandum of Agreement, or MOA, with CGSUE, or Cornell Graduate Students United, UE, that gives the union the right to bargain over the effects of discipline of graduate workers on their working conditions, effective immediately. Pursuant to the MOA, CGSUE, SUUE issued a demand to bargain with Cornell administration over the effects of the discipline administered to Tall. CGSUUE condemns Tall's suspension, which represents a disturbing pattern of discriminatory discipline against marginalized graduate workers. The union is still fighting for just cause protections and discipline and discharge, due process for academic evaluations, strong academic freedom, and non-discrimination protections inclusive of political affiliation and action, religious practice, and caste, end quote. So that is a lot of the context that we wanted to sort of like provide for you guys up top. And we will, of course, link to Aaron Fernando's piece in the nation so you could read more about it. And I I wouldn't have to um, burden our guests today with with explaining the whole context here, because as I said at the top, time is of the essence. And we do want to focus the second half of this conversation on where things stand right now as we record uh, at Cornell uh, and what folks can do right now um, to to help and get involved. And so Joanna and Jenna from the Cornell Graduate Students uh, Union are here to um, join us and help us unpack this uh, important story and thank you both so much for taking time to do this. I really appreciate it and I I promise that that's the most that folks are going to hear me talk at the top of the episode up here. I really wanted to turn things over to both of y'all and ask if um, yeah, first like uh, if you could sort of take us back to last year, right? You know, when like the the student intifada movement was really spreading to campuses not just across the U.S. but around the world. Um, You know, it felt like this was a really big step in the protest movement. Uh, and now we are facing like, you know, a lot of the more sinister uh, institutional backlash beyond just the immediate police led backlash that we saw on campuses like uh, uh, Columbia and and more. So can, can you both um, talk to us a little bit about uh, how we got from there to hear, and then we'll talk about where things currently stand with uh, Tall's case and and, um, what the union is doing to fight it. Yeah, um, well, first, thank you again for having us. You know, we're really um, happy to be able to have a platform to share some of what's going on at Cornell. Uh, Wish it was under different circumstances, but um, I think I speak for myself and Jenna when I say, you know, we're, we're both grateful that you made time for us, especially with the um, situation as evolving as quickly as it it has been. So um, what I I, I can say about last year is it's actually interesting um, that you bring up, you know, some of the more overt forms of discipline and policing that were taking place across campuses. It's actually one way um, that I think Cornell was different. So Um, we're at Cornell's main campus, which is in central New York in Ithaca. Um, it's college town. It's pretty small. It's rural, rural for, for the most part. So, um, a lot of what was taking place across the country, we didn't really have here, um, in terms of over-policing, especially with, you know, the student encampment in the spring, there were some flare-ups, but it was never, it never really got to the point where it was violent. Um, everything was entirely peaceful. Um from the, um, at least from the side of, you know, the, 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 the pro-Palestinian protesters. So, uh, but what, what was always present, um, and I think now is sort of bubbling over and coming to the surface is some of these more, uh, insidious forms of repression and discipline, um, and targeting of specific individuals who are perceived as leaders in, um, in this, you know, type of movement, um, and the censorship that we're really seeing, um, it was taking place last semester, but 
now we're just sort of it's a continuation of of um what we had last semester and i think one of the other um shifts with Cornell is that we had a change in leadership. So our uh, former provost is now the president of the university. Um, our former president retired. Take from that what you will. Uh, <laughs> but um, so yeah, now uh, now we have a, a new president, uh, Kotlikoff, who has taken the helm and is really um, spearheading a lot of these um, more repressive tactics that he was able to get away with. Um, uh, without as much uh, attention, I think, in the past. Yeah, I, I will I will jump in and, and second Joanna. And of course, thank you for having us. We're um, delighted to be here, even you know under the difficult circumstances. But I, I really do want to highlight that change in leadership at, at Cornell. Um, there was, I think, a sense from all of us, um, either union members or activists, that Kotlikoff's change of role from the provost to the president was going to lead to um, a real change in intact or maybe even an intensification of what had been happening in the spring. And I think that our sort of sort of our fears are being validated right now, um, given what's happening on campus. So that change of leadership, I think, is really key. Um, you have a new president who will be an interim president, but is new nonetheless, who is trying to prove himself um, to, to higher ups, board of trustees, um, et cetera. And so let's let's talk about, I mean, I guess like how things have sort of been moving in the new school year, um, because it it feels like, you know, I mean, and this is something that we've talked to, uh, you know, students, graduate students and faculty who were involved with the uh, different encampments last year with the coverage that we were doing here at The Real News. You know, we spoke with folks at UCLA, University of Michigan, Columbia, um, uh, uh, Indiana, so on and so forth, right? And, and we were seeing, yeah, that that there were different kind of approaches that different administrations were taking. Like, you know, one university uh, had snipers on the roof. You know, the other university is trying to, like, make itself seem a little more more, you know, like a, a open, um, you know, students at Stanford won, you know, like critical gains uh, and concessions from the university. So this this is definitely a an intense and protracted struggle that has not had one single outcome. Um, but what we have seen, you know, especially heading into the new year is that, you know, university administrations um, and, you know, the, the, the powers to which they uh, answer, be they on the donor side or the political side, right, have taken that time over the summer to really revamp their strategies for how to deal with, you know, and, and the, when I say deal with, you know, those that word that terms carrying, you know, like a lot of weight here, uh, deal with these protests. You know, some universities we've already seen are taking uh, action, even uh, disciplining or firing faculty, right? And now we have, you know, the case here at Cornell. So I wanted to ask if you could just sort of like, please tell us, yeah, like uh, um, kind of like how things have um, gone this year. Did it feel markedly different kind of walking onto campus at the beginning of this school year? Uh, and what has been the the kind of like course of events that have led us to where we are right now and, and where do things currently stand right now? Yeah, I, I think there was a sense from everyone um, on campus who's been paying attention to events on campus that this year was going to be a little bit different and a little bit more intense. The, um, I believe it was the very first day of classes. I think it was on August 26th. The provost and uh, new interim provost and uh, new interim president Kalikov sent out an email to the entire student body and I believe the entire um, Cornell community outlining new guidelines for how discipline would be handled this semester um, for student activists. And it was it's essentially this three tier system that's more or less, as we've seen over the past week, just completely gone out the window, um, where you it's kind of like a three strikes and you're out. So uh, first offense is, uh, I guess I probably need to pull up the email, but the first offense is like a warning, right? Uh, of, uh, you get called into a conduct meeting with the um, um, 
student code of conduct office and it's a warning. The second offense, and it could just be an offense could be, I don't know, attending a protest, right? Attending a rally that's going on a little too long per CUPD, Cornell University Police's discretion. Uh, second offense is a um, non-academic suspension which essentially bars people from participating in clubs and extracurriculars. And then the third would be, uh, you know, more permanent or interim, like temporary suspension and academic suspension. So um, what's happening to Momadou right now. Um, the other change is that in, in response to some of the discipline that graduate workers in particular faced in the spring, where we had a number of international um, and just, you know, um, grads of various marginalized identities targeted for their participation in our encampment um, at Cornell uh, were issued, they were suspended. In response to that, graduate workers here organized a picket outside of a bargaining session, and that resulted in um, really demanding that the university bargain with us over, over that discipline. Um, and as a result of that, we got this memorandum of agreement um, which we signed with the university in July. And this agreement essentially states that the university is obligated to bargain with us, bargain with our union over the effects of grad worker discipline. So you have this three-tier system that the university is saying they're going to abide by because there's been a lot of questions about how discipline's made it out um, up until now, because it's been completely arbitrary. And uh, our union has this MOA um, that we've signed with the university saying you have to bargain with us. And as I think Jenna can tell you more about, um, things are not playing out how they should. Yeah, I can I can talk a little bit more about the enforcement of the memorandum of agreement. It, it does feel like Cornell administration, like the, the head and the hand are not talking. Um, you know, on purpose, <laughs> more than likely. Um, you know, Cornell's bargaining committee is composed of um, general counsel, faculty, and, you know, of course, an outside negotiator as well. And so they are bargaining this memorandum of agreement with us um, beginning in May, which was a huge industry setting victory um, to, to win something that actually says your employer has to um, come to the bargaining table around really any kind of discipline that affects working conditions. So from the time we started bargaining that until July, um, when we actually signed it, um, you know, Cornell's bargaining committee was working with CGSUUE to hammer this out and it's become final. And it's a document that we are really proud of, um, you know, not only for a victory for us, but for other graduate uh, shops around the country. So to see, I think we were all sort of waiting on bated breath to see how the university would handle the the enforcement of the, the memorandum. And of course, the, the answer that we received is they are blatantly disregarding it. Um, they have an obligation to bargain with us over any sort of discipline meted out that affects the terms and conditions of employment. And of course, in Moma Dutal's case, that is absolutely happening. Um, you know, de-enrollment and the revoking of his visa alone constitutes a huge disruption um, to, to his terms and conditions of, of, his, of his work. So to have your bargaining committee actually bargain with the union to create this really, um, really clear, <laughs> really, really, really clear um, guidelines for how discipline is to be handed down and how the union is to be involved in that process, and then to completely disregard it, especially after sending out this, you know, three, three strikes email where due process is supposed to be a guarantee. Um, it does feel like the president's office is not communicating properly with the offices that actually are in charge of meeting out discipline. And it's, it's, um, it's been very disappointing to say the least from the union's perspective. Well, can I just ask a little more on that? I mean, you know, I can't imagine, you know, how they're feeling right now, but um, what can you tell us about how Mamadou's doing um, and, and how this is affecting them? Um, you know, and, and, and like for anyone out there listening who maybe is still, you know, kind of asking those questions of like, well, why is this a labor issue? Like what is what do unions and grad workers have to do with with Palestine? Like, I guess like, yeah, like what, what would you say to folks out there, you know, like a, about why this is? A, a labor issue and how this is affecting one of your members right now and their livelihood. It's very much a labor issue. It's uh, with the type of work that graduate workers 
do, we teach, we research. Um, Mamadou is a student in Africana studies, a grad worker in Africana studies. Um, he can't teach his classes right now because he's been suspended. He, his students are missing out on all that he has to offer as uh, an instructor because he can't set foot on campus. Um, he can't do his job. So it's it's very much a labor issue from a surface level. And then you think about um, the, uh, you know, types of things that graduate workers are being disciplined for, not only by like, you know, participating in protest activity, but also just by teaching their subject matter in the classroom. Um, I think Momadou and uh, a number of other graduate workers, um, just who I personally am aware of and um, have close friendships with, have reported some really um, troubling things uh, about the response of the administration to the subject matter in their courses, right? So this is really an issue of academic freedom as well, where you have people not only not having the freedom to express themselves really just on campus in general and, uh, you know, oppose what's happening in Palestine and the atrocities that they're seeing, they can't even teach about it as it relates to um, their their courses um, as it relates to their subject matter. That's really scary at an institution that prides itself on, you know, Cornell being an Ivy League institution, people pay a lot of money to come here, um, are really proud when they get in, like with an institution like Cornell with this type of reputation and really any institution, any uh, it, it just runs completely contrary to um, any institution of higher education, like educational and academic mission um, to be doing this. So um, it's an issue in academic of academic freedom. It's an issue of worker autonomy and workers' rights. Um, and um, because we are workers, it's very much a labor issue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've thought about this a lot in the last couple of days, and I don't I don't think there are many union members across industries in this country who would ever stand for the level of unilateral discipline from their employer that Cornell is meeting out to Momadou Tal right now. It is a fundamental union issue that your boss cannot exercise unilateral power over you. You get a say in your working conditions, being hired and fired as part of your working conditions. So you know, this is an absolutely fundamental fight that unions, labor unions have been fighting for, you know, over 150 years in the United States. Um, it is absolutely crucial to our fight and a union, you know, it needs to be able to protect it, its workers from that complete unilateral um, bring down of power. And absolutely, it is an academic freedom issue as well, to echo uh, Juana there. Um, I, I work in the humanities. <laughs> Um, this is, you know, speaking of fundamental, it's fundamental to what we do in the humanities is to, to teach um, about the horrors of history, to, to be frank, like, um, and to talk about what happens in the world today. And that includes, um, that includes politics in all of its forms, and it includes genocide. And so to have students in the humanities, um, any anywhere across the university, but particularly right now in the humanities on, you know, thinking maybe I shouldn't teach this. I'm not really sure um, how that will be received by my students, or I'm not sure who will find out about this. I hear that from um, my coworkers, and that's very scary. So what is happening to, to Momadou Tal is absolutely a disgrace, but it, there are also many effects that trickle down. Um, from this. It's about creating a culture of fear. And when your workers are fearful, that is a union issue, always. There's um, maybe one other thing that I just wanted to add to this that we haven't, we've sort of talked around, but haven't actually um, spoken to directly is a lot of people don't understand what a grad worker union is. <laughs> um, because we are grad students, and we also do work that makes the university run. So um, as Jenna has, you know, already highlighted, I think really um, eloquently, we teach. 
we, we, we do research on behalf of the university, but we're also here taking classes. So we have these, you know, dual roles. And um, when the university disciplines workers under a, you know, as, as quote unquote students or under the guise of academics, um, that is inextricable from our employment and our work, role as workers. So in Momodu's case, for example, when you are suspended as a student, you were also suspended and effectively fired from your employment. When you're de-enrolled as a student, you're terminated. And um, to Jenna's point earlier, there's no other industry where that would be acceptable, where lack of due process, where lack of just cause for termination because of something that is independent in the university's eyes, at least, of your employment uh, is acceptable. Um, and that's also not a distinction that we really, that really exists in practice. We're one and the same. Um, so I think that's just maybe an important point to clarify. We're students and we're also workers and those those, those things are in, um, inextricably linked. Oh yeah, I mean, speaking as a former grad worker and uh, member of University of Michigan GEO, shout out to GEO. Um, yeah, I mean, like that's like, it's like what, like we're getting a lot of the uh, education and um, practice in like our coursework that we are then able to apply in our teaching work um, and be better educators. Yeah. And like, uh, yeah, lo and behold, we're one and the same person, you know, like learning and teaching at the same time. Hold, you know, holy shit. You know, people can do more than one thing at once. Um, and, and like that, it, I, I wanted to just kind of ask a quick question there because um on the question of you know grad unions and and um a grad labor struggles right i mean like there is something uh sinister and and kind of harrowingly uh that echoes uh you know one of the weapons of first resort that we tend to see during um, grad unionization efforts or uh, grad strikes um, at universities this is something that I have seen reporting on grad strikes and union efforts like across the country. Um, and, and I remember seeing myself as a, as a tactic that the University of Michigan employed when I was a member of our graduate union there. International students have a sort of special place in like the the um, university's calculus for how to instill fear and impose discipline uh, and, and, and impose division within a, a bargaining unit. Um, and I just wanted to ask if, if y'all could speak, you know, like as union members, right, about the 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 fact that the that Mamadou being an international student here is is also a really important detail of the story, like both in terms of what this discipline is going to mean for him personally, but but also what him being an international student like is allowing the university to do in perpetuating the chilling effect that, that y'all were talking about here. This is something that comes up all the time when grad students go on strike because universities will almost always like clockwork when a strike happens, they will send out an email notifying uh, um, international students that if they're not working they will they could lose their visas and thus their immigration status so could you please yeah like just just speak to that for a second and then we'll wrap up by asking like uh, uh what folks can do uh now to help yeah it's it's not a surprise i think to anyone that when the boss wants to intimidate and instill fear they go after the most vulnerable workers first and that is our international students um, who make up uh, approximately 50% of our membership, 50% of our bargaining unit. I, it's an intimidation tactic through and through. It is, yeah, I don't really have much more to add to that other than, you know, we see it, we see it for exactly what it is. Um, and I think what's been really heartening is to see the um, 
outrage from our international workers, as well as the broader Cornell community. Um, I think the response from the community is really demonstrating, and by community, I mean on campus, and then also more broadly nationwide, um, demonstrating to our workers here that people are not just going to sit by and accept this. Our, our union will not just sit by and let one of our own be dis disciplined and effectively, you know, um, have his visa status revoked and then effectively be deported. We're not just going to sit by and allow that to happen. Um, and I think that's an important thing for our um, our you know that fifty percent of our our unit to really see that we stand by them one hundred percent. Yeah, I will add that one of the things that makes this situation around intimidation of international students at Cornell, international workers, like. In incredibly divisive is that one of Cornell's founding principles is any person, any study. It's all over this campus. Um, you know, I, I see posters of it when I walk down the hall in my workspace. And so to sort of rest on um, the prestige of having 50% of our of our bargaining unit members be international workers who are some of like the best, the brightest, and the most generous colleagues ever. Um, but to then turn that right around and make people feel scared and to make people more vulnerable and to, for Cornell's administration to feel like they have leverage or a kind of control over international workers is uh, really, really disappointing, um, particularly given its sort of founding, founding ethos, right? Um, and just to Echo Juana, like if we have 50% of our bargaining unit members here on visas, you better be sure that we're gonna we're gonna fight for for one of our members being disciplined and possibly fired and, and losing his visa. Like if we don't fight for that, what are we for? Right. Um, this has always been integral to our organizing. It has always been integral to the contract that we are currently negotiating with Cornell. So um, it's perhaps even, in, as far as the numbers, even more of an issue here at Cornell um, than it is at maybe um, comparable institutions in the United States. Well, Joanna, Jenna, I want to thank you both again so much for taking time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. And I just wanted to, um, yeah, give you all the, the final word here and ask if um, you could let our listeners know, uh, you know, what happens now and, and um, what the union is uh, trying to do, what the campus community uh, is doing to um, stand against this and what um, folks out there who are listening to this, what they can do uh, to stay up to date on this and, and what they can do to get involved themselves. Yeah, I can go ahead and plug a, a few things. So um, as we mentioned before we started recording, we have a rally for workplace justice um, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, what is tomorrow? October 2nd uh, at noon, uh, we will be marching from one of the buildings um, near uh, central campus down to the administrative building demanding that the university bargain with us over the effects of um, Mamadou Tal's suspension and also demanding that you, the university give us just cause and due process when it comes to these various forms of discipline, um, along with protections for um, academic freedom and non-discrimination when it comes to political speech and activity, caste, uh, international workers' rights. These are all things that are really, really integral to our union. Um, so that's tomorrow. Um, and we'll have members of the community there, faculty, um, some um, folks from our AAUP chapter will be joining us, which is exciting. Um, so it's really it's going to be a great event if anyone is in the end. Okay, well, I don't think you'll have this released by the time this goes out, so you can cut that part. Uh, <laughs> just going to say if anyone's here, they can feel free to come up to campus, but I, I, I doubt anyone will be here. Um, and then, I, Jenna, do you want to take some of the other things that we have going on right now? Sure. I mean, for for those people who are not in Ithaca and want to stay up to date, we are keeping um, people up to date with our Instagram. That's at Cornell underscore GSU. Um, we're trying to be as on top of um, the developing situation as we can. 
Um, so that's one avenue to stay informed. Um, we have a bargaining session. Um, CGSU will sit across the table from Cornell's bargaining committee on Wednesday, October the 9th. And so look out for news around that. There may be some coordinated action as the situation develops. Um, we're still thinking about that, but uh, more news to come as, as uh, the bargaining committee that Joanna and I are part of sort of goes to sit at the table again um, with Cornell's representatives, given what has unfolded since our, our last session about two weeks ago. So um, more news to come, stay informed. Instagram is a great way to do it. And if you happen to be around for a rally tomorrow, come on out, have a, have a chant. It'll be cathartic. I have two more things to plug. We should have made a list ahead of this. Um, so we have an action network petition that um, UE National has just helped us launch earlier today. Um, so if you are a member of a local, any any local doesn't have to be UE, please, please, please check out our social media and the UE National um, um socials and you should be able to find that petition we can also send you the link um max and you can share that and then we also have um different petitions for um different groups depending on yours you know what your affiliation is so we have one that's specific to grad locals so please reach out to us you can either like dm us on instagram or twitter or you can um, follow up with us at ec at cornellgradunion.org with any questions or, you know, we just have um, questions about how to support or um, want to get access to any of those resources, we can send them to you directly um, through that email as well. Cornell underscore GSU on socials? I think so. That's the Instagram. We need Cornell to bargain with us. Period. We have this MOA, it's time for Cornell to, you know, hold up their end of that signed agreement and bargain with us over not just Momadou's suspension, but any grad worker discipline under these policies. Meet us at the table. <laughs>